class. Um, this is your second Rhino tutorial. I'm going to try and do this on video because we do not spend nearly enough time together as far as I'm concerned. Um, the file will be up on the blog as well as the video um, just to give you a quick idea of uh, what we'll be doing here. Um, if you look up in your layers menu, we're going to go through each of these layers step by step. It's a slightly different function. Um, and if I turn on a layer, for instance, you can see I get um, not just sort of the first step, which would be uh, these guys, but the second step, which would be that. Um, so if you turn everything on, you should get from uh, the from the front back, you should get step-by-step -step instructions to on uh, what each next level does. So um, let's get started. Uh, the first thing we want to look at, since we've started with curves, are um, extruding planar curves into solids. This whole tutorial will be about um, making solids for 3D printing and you will get an assignment to um, apply all of these things. So if you look here, I've got, let me hide this. Let me just get rid of these guys. Um, I've drawn some sort of arbitrary shapes here. Uh, what I'd like to demonstrate is um, simply extrude uh, from the solids menu, extrude planar curve straight. Now I can select, I have these grouped, if I ungroup them, I can select just the outside curve, say solid, extrude, planar curve, straight, and you can see I can drag a solid, and it gives me a solid figure there. Um, what I'd like to show you as well is that if I repeat that and I select both curves, then it sort of automatically subtracts that center part. So I get a solid, but I get also, um, in effect, a tube shape there. So that's extrude planar curve straight. Um, turn this layer off and turn the next layer on. Uh, the next trick is called revolve, and I can use a couple of things. Uh, I can use lots of things to make a revolved shape. Hide these guys. Um, I've made a cross-section curve here, essentially. Um, so you can imagine how one might do this. This was a control point curve, and this was a straight piece of polyline there. And what I'd like to do is take that, and from the surface menu, say revolve and then you have to go into the command line and some of this stuff is a little confusing if it's your first time but I'm gonna snap on the end of that little bit there I'm gonna hold shift and just drag up here so this is the axis for my revolve I'll go back to perspective so you can see what's happening here now it's asking me how far around do I want that to revolve in degrees? So for instance, 180 degrees. If I wanted to close that surface all the way around, it would default to 360. So I'm just going to say start angle there, revolution 360. All I did was hit enter twice, that's the default. And I get this kind of shape. Um, so it's taken my cross section curve and just spun it around that axis. If I wanted to make that a solid, I could go to my solid menu, cap planar holes, and now we have uh, sort of a solid, um, beautiful vase that you can give to your uh, loved ones for the holidays. So I'm going to step back there, turn off that layer. And now we're going to do what's called sweep one rail. So with sweep one rail, I have a cross-section profile, which is just a circle in this case. And then I have a path for it to follow, or a rail. So uh, pretty simple. 
and the result will be um, this shape in the back, which is a, a solid, um, after I cap it. Uh, to sweep one rail under the surface menu, sweep one rail. Select the rail. The rail is like, think of it like a train track rail. And now select cross section curves. Press enter. Um, don't worry about this seam adjust point thing. Just hit enter again. You can go through a couple of different um, versions of, of a sweep and they'll do a couple of slightly different things in cross-section. So you can play with that and when you're satisfied say sweep. So now I've got that cross-section curve that has followed that rail and if I wanted to make that a solid I could say again cap planar holes Boom. Okay. Another solid capable of being 3D printed. Let's turn off that layer. Now, another interesting, quick, fun thing to do is uh, simply a pipe. So, under the solids menu, there's primitives, box, sphere, cylinder, etc. There's also some, some cool stuff here, pipe and tube, which we're going to look at right now. Slab, torus. Um, so under solid modeling, you're going to find a lot of the tools that you should stick with when it comes to 3D printing. It will cause less trouble in the end. Uh, so we're going to do pipe. And if I look at the command line, it says select curve to create the pipe around. So I'm selecting this curve. And now it's saying, what's my start radius in the command line? So arbitrarily, I'm going to say this. And what's my end radius? I'm going to make it a little bigger and say this. And then just hit Enter. Don't worry about those other adjustments just yet. What it does is it makes a pipe right around that path. And this looks similar to the top of your large intestine. Step back here, turn this layer off. Now we're going to look at loft. Loft has a lot of steps. So if you get confused here, uh, just come back to this video and watch it all night long. Uh, for starters, I've started with a couple of curves. Now a loft is basically what's the mathematical surface interpolated between these two curves. What does that mean in English? I have no idea. Uh, but if I select both of these curves and I go to my surface menu and I say loft, then what I get is sort of a mathematical interpretation between this curve and this curve. And I've, I've lost a lot of the height here. I can also change a little bit about that surface with things like um, whether I want to simplify it, what style of loft it is. So just play around with these things. You can see here I've adhered to the curves quite well. I say loft. And now if I wanted to use that as a surface and another solid. There's a couple of things I could do. The way I'm going to choose to do it here is to make a surface based on a cross-section curve. So I'm just going to make a box of a curve. Select that curve. I'm going to make that a surface by extruding that curve straight. I'm going to make sure I drag it through my lofted surface. And now I can trim all that out. My cut object will be the box first. Get rid of these guys. Oops, sorry. Delete, delete, 
trim again. Now my cutting object is the surface inside and I want to trim out the top of the box. So now I've got box with my wavy potato chip top on it and I can join those. I still have an open side on the bottom. It's also planar so I can say solid cap planar hole. And now I've got a solid wavy potato chip box useful for everyone. Step back here. Now I'm going to show you tube. So tube is under the solid menu. Pretty straightforward. Um, all I've done here is follow the tube command or solid sorry tube or type tube and I'm gonna go from the bottom up here if you watch the command line that's down here it's gonna say what's this radius now it's going to say what's that radius, that's the interior radius and now I can extrude that as a solid alright nice and simple now for the sake of 3D printing a tube can give you a hang up when you model it because it has an interior space that let's say in a powder 3D printer we need to get the powder out and in a plastic 3D printer we need to get the support material out so I've stepped through the process of just modeling the tube here and over the tube directly over the tube placed a couple of cross-section curves I've lined them up so that they're going to definitely intersect with my tube. I've extruded those as solids so that they intersect with the tube. Okay, so if you look in there, there's my solids. And then I've done a Boolean difference. And I've just subtracted those two solids so I've got uh, I'm not sure what to call it maybe porting but you can imagine if this were a tube that you 3D printed now I have a space for the powder to come out of the interior or the support material to dissolve from the interior and actually drain out So that was Boolean. And just a quick review of Boolean, which I'm pretty sure you did last year. If I have a whole pile of solid blocks here, then the Boolean is just a bunch of different mathematical ways to use the geometry of those blocks to change the other blocks. So if there's an intersection here, I can, for instance, Boolean union and these two things become one solid right pretty simple if I were to take this one and intersect it rather with the sphere let's see if we can crash Rhino here I could boolean difference you watch the command line it says select what you want to subtract from I'm going to subtract from my cone here hit enter and what do I want to subtract with the sphere and hit enter and then I get this nice spherical cutaway from my piece okay and it's still a solid boolean is solid modeling so this piece is fit to 3d print another holiday gift perhaps the last boolean I want to
take a look at is split and this can be really handy I've made just a flat planar curve here and I've done that let me step through this this is pretty useful I've done that by going to my surface menu and saying plane and saying cutting plane so if I know I just want to cut a plane through something this is available to me select objects press enter the start of my cut plane I'm gonna just arbitrarily say it's right here and the end of the cut plane is right there now what Rhino does for you is make sure that that plane intersects that solid in a way that's going to uh, sort of increase your chances of a successful boolean split. So if I go to my boolean menu, say split, select the surfaces to be split, and hit enter, select the cutting surface, and hit enter. Now, if I get rid of this, what I have is a solid of that and this. I can delete that. See, I still have a solid here. Okay, that is the review. Um, more to come on editing files for 3D printing, uh, where we'll go over how to patch up little holes because uh, your geometry is going to be so complex and beautiful that you'll need to do a little bit of repair, as we all do. Uh, thanks. See you soon.